This is probability notes three multiplication counting principles. Today we're going to calculate the number of ways of choosing one element from each of different several sets. Uh, we'll also look at counting arrangements with and without replacement. We're going to take a look at this first example. Uh, it says on Fridays I like to show my school spirit by wearing green. Um, when I'm at home I kind of wear this casual gear but you know at school I go shirt and tie to kind of class it up. And I have two different green shirts. I have a light green and dark green. Three different styles of green ties with the school logo, dark green, and one with stripes. And I also have two styles of pants, khaki and black, that I think go pretty well with my outfit. Um, my question is, how many different outfits consisting of a green shirt, green tie, and pants are possible? Now, one way of setting this up is to create a tree diagram. And by this, I mean my first option is sort of going, hmm, I have two different kinds of shirts I can wear. Light green and dark green. I'll abbreviate them L and D. Now if I get a light shirt, I can go with three different kinds of ties, either the school logo tie, the dark green tie, or the stripes tie. So I'll abbreviate that SL, DG, and S. Similarly, if I choose the dark shirt, I can still go with either of those three styles of ties, SL, DG, or S. Now based off of this type of shirt and the type of tie, then I have the two different types of pants that I could kind of branch off from each of these tie combinations. This would be your black pants and your khaki. So off of each of these different tie combinations, we're going to branch off with either the khaki or the black pants. So we're going to have all these different K's and B's. Now what this does is this organizes my information so I can kind of quickly count out how many different arrangements are possible. Now it gets a little busy down here, but if you look at how many total branches there are at the end, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different arrangements if you start with a kind of shirt, like light green, a type of style of tie, like stripes, and then a type of pair of pants, like khaki, and there are 12 altogether. Now this gets a little busy, it takes a while to do, so fortunately we have this thing called the multiplication counting principle, which says if you want to count the number of ways of doing this, basically multiply the number of arrangements of set A and multiply it by the number of arrangements for set B. Now we have three different sets we're working with here, a set of shirts, ties, and pants, so you can just multiply each of these three sets. It's not, kind of, it's not really restricted to just two. So using the multiplication counting principle, I have two kinds of shirts, three kinds of ties, two kinds of pants, and if you multiply two times three times two, you get 12. On number two, it's the same kind of idea at a movie theater. If you have four different sizes of popcorn and 12 different varieties of candy that can be purchased, how many different ways can a person order a popcorn and a box of candy? Sure, you could do a tree diagram that starts with four different sizes of popcorn and then it branches each of these sizes of popcorn branches into 12 varieties of candy, but good grief, that'd be a ton of branches. Why not just go, hmm, four sets of popcorn, 12 varieties of candy, multiply them together, and get your answer that way. I think that works out a lot nicer. As we look at example three, it says some license plates in Michigan consist of three letters followed by four numbers, like you see in the picture. How many different license plate combinations of this form are possible? Similar to what we just did, you kind of want to think of the different positions that are possible here. We have three letters followed by four numbers. And the number of letters that are possible are, well, 26. There's 26 letters of the alphabet. For the second letter, well, there's still 26 letters of the alphabet. And for the third letter, there are still 26 letters of the alphabet. You can use any letter. You can repeat the letters. That's fine. For numbers, you have, it seems like nine numbers, but you also have zero, so that counts as ten total numbers to choose from for the first number. And then you could go again, zero through nine for the second digit, zero through nine for the third digit, zero through nine for the fourth digit. How many different license plate combinations are possible? Multiply these values all together. When you do that, you get this really huge number of like 175,760,000. As a shortcut to writing this, you could also say, instead of writing 26 times 26 times 26, that's 26 cubed times 10 to the fourth power. Multiply all this together. You're not doing any addition. For number four, 
A test question or a test consists of four true false questions and six multiple choice questions where each multiple choice question has five choices. To find out how many different answer combinations are possible, let's start with the four true and false questions. One, two, three, four. There are two choices for the first question. It's either true or false. Uh, the second question has two choices, true or false. Third question has two choices. Question four has two choices. The next six questions are multiple choice where each question has five choices. So for the first multiple choice question, you have five choices, A, B, C, D, or E. The same thing for the second, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth. All of these questions each have five choices. You can repeat the same letter. You can answer A, 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 or because we know it's always C, 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 you could do that as well. Or you could choose a different answer each problem. We multiply all of these values together. Again, if you don't want to write out all these twos and fives, what you can say is we have four of these twos, which is two to the fourth power, times we have six of these fives, five to the sixth power. And if you multiply this all out, you get 250,000. That's a lot of answer combinations. What's the probability of answering all of these problems correctly? Well, if you think of this as sort of being like the sample space, the event would be getting each question correct. And for each question, there's one right answer. So it's basically for the event, you would have to get the first question right, the second question right, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth question right. There is one way of getting all questions right, one times one times one times one, or one to the tenth power. This is your event, that's your numerator. Sample size goes in the denominator, your answer, 1 over 250,000. On the next page is a problem 5. Go ahead and try to work out that problem, and we'll see what the solution is in just a moment. If you roll the die 8 times, there are 8 different rolls you're doing. Each different roll has 6 different outcomes, either a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So there's 6 different things that could happen for the first roll. You can get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. 6 for the 2nd, 6 for the 3rd, for the 4th, for the 5th, for the 6th, for the 7th, for the 8th. You're multiplying the number 6 8 times, so you could write this as 6 to the 8th power. And if you crunch out what 6 to the 8th power equals, it's in the neighborhood of 1,679,616. Each of the values we just solved involved the replacement of values, which means we can reuse certain values in our combinations. For the license plate examples, we're allowed to repeat letters and numbers. We can do that. A license plate does not have to have three different letters and three different numbers in it. For the test example, you can answer more than one question true or false, and you can repeat the same letter for the multiple choice answers, like B. For the dice rolling example, the same number can be rolled over and over again. So we say when there are n choices for each of k elements, there are n to the k arrangements with replacement. We're finally going to calculate the number of arrangements without replacement. Here we have Abby, Betsy, Christina, Danielle, and Esther competing in a 100 meter dash. Timers are going to determine which place the athletes finish. How many different orders can the athletes finish? Well, we have five different places, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And there's five different athletes who could finish first. Let's say Abby finishes first. But there are five different athletes who could have finished first. If Abby finishes first, that only leaves four athletes that can compete for second place, because Abby obviously has won. She's not going to compete for second as well. So that leaves us with four people competing for second place. Let's say Betsy's the winner. That leaves us now three people competing for third place. Let's say Danielle wins. That leaves us with these two fighting for fourth place. Let's say Christina wins. Now we know Esther's going to be in last place. There's only one person left. We multiply these values together and you end up with 100 to 20, that's how many different orders the athletes can finish. Anytime you start with a number and multiply by descending numbers down to 1, you can also write it as that first number with an exclamation point. This means 5 factorial, and that's also the same thing. Pause the video and try work your way through problem 6. When you unpause it, we'll go through the answers. On number six, on a matching test, students are given the first ten presidents of the United States in the left-hand column and have to match up the first ten vice presidents in the right-hand column. How many different arrangements could the students form? Obviously, we have ten different presidents, 
they're going to be matched up with 10 different vice presidents. So we're going to start with, for the first president, George Washington, there's 10 different vice presidents we could choose from. When we move on to John Adams, that's going to leave us with, well, we've already matched up George Washington with one of the vice presidents, so it leaves us with nine vice presidents. And kind of a similar situation, once we've taken that second example of nine, that leaves us with eight to choose from for the next position, then seven, then six, five, four, three, two, and one for that last position. So obviously, once we choose George Washington's vice president, we're down to nine. Once we choose John Adams's, we're down to eight, so on and so forth, all the way down to one. This, of course, is equal to 10 factorial. If you crunch this out, you get something really big, like 3,628,800. These two examples involve making selections without replacement, which means we can't reuse values in our arrangements. For the racing example, if Abby finishes in first, she can't finish in second. For the matching example, once we choose George Washington's vice president, we're not going to match up George Washington with another vice president. We can't reuse George Washington, nor can we reuse any of the vice presidents. So we say there are n factorial arrangements of n elements without replacement.